Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another uh, Python Django tutorial for you. Um, this time round, we're going to take the the concepts that we looked at in in tutorial number three about views and URLs, and we're going to take it a step further just to explore you know, in more detail how that works. Um, last time we very briefly kind of went over the subjects, and we did a very simple you know how do you actually link a URL to a page, but this time we're going to look at passing information through to pages using URLs, which is a useful task to know when you're in doing web development. So, um, as well as that, we're also going to um, bring things more n uh, nicely packaged into the article uh, app that we've been building throughout the series. And we're going to show you how to, to keep even the URLs for that article package separate from the rest of the project. So, with that, we're going to look at how that actually works in terms of separating URLs out set for a, sp a specific package. Now, the first time when we actually built the, the URLs last uh, tutorial, we built the URLs in the Django test folder with this URLs file. And in there, we did our hello world type URLs. This time, we're actually going to go into the article folder where our app is, and as well as having a models and a, a tests and a views file, we're going to give it a URLs file, and that all of the the URLs within this will only relate to the article app or package. So that means that in future we could possibly just take that folder article drag and drop it into a different Django project and add another line to the URLs file inside of our Django, our main project URLs file that would just basically link in all of those URLs that are being pre-programmed for us. So it basically makes article more like a, a module in itself that can be dragged and dropped into other projects in the future, which is a great way of working because then you don't have to rewrite anything. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is that we do create that URLs file. And then if we edit that, we'll just bring in as normal the import that we have at the top of our normal URLs file. Patterns include URL. Then we add a list of URLs, Be being careful to make sure that we put this at the beginning because although I'm not entirely sure why it's there, it breaks if you don't put it there. So always make sure you put that whatever you do. <clears throat> so the next part is to actually add in two URLs that are going to help us demonstrate how the passing of information can work. So the first one is uh, the way we pass through to the all function or the all URL, which actually maps through to our article views, articles view, which is a view that's just going to show all the articles that we have in our database. The next one is a bit more complex. Now, this is where we, we name parts of the URL. Um, the reason why we'd name it is because once we start passing information through to our views, in the actual arguments to our view functions, we can then start naming variables. And I'll show you how that maps shortly. But just to basically give a description for what this actually means, it's we're saying there's a URL called get, and it takes a parameter that's inside this square brackets is called article underscore ID under the article the angled brackets sorry followed by some regex for the type so that's in an integer or a number plus so it can be any length it doesn't have to be four digits or one digit it could be any length and the reason for that is obviously because article IDs could be you know could number into the thousands or it could just be five so we, w we don't want the the URL system looking 
for a number that's always two digits long, for instance. So we're saying that digit within this particular part of the URL between these two slashes can be a variable length. And then all we're saying is that it maps through to article views article. And that's all we've said for that. Now that now that we've done that, we can then tell the main project URLs file how to deal with it. And the way that we do that is we add this one single line, which is very simple. We're going to say that whenever anybody types in articles forward slash anything, we should map that through to the set of URLs that we include from article.urls. Now, that basically includes everything that we've put in the other URLs file and maps it over onto the end of the article's URL that we'd have on our website address. So for instance, if we go articles all on our URL, our system will map through from articles and go and look for another smaller URL called all inside of our article URLs, which of course we defined here. So it'll map through to that and then know that that actually maps through to the correct view. And the same with the other ones. So for instance, if we were to say um, get two, that would map through to our URLs and this would be picked up as two or three or whatever the ID is it would then be turned into an article underscore ID variable and passed through to the view. Now, one thing that just is important to note is that when I'm making these URLs, I'm using the URL function to wrap around. In my main sites or my main um, projects URLs, I've excluded that from the beginning of the line because I'm only making this to encapsulate that and that's something peculiar to when you use include you don't need to put URL at the beginning you just basically wrap it and use your include and then Django is smart enough to figure out the rest for you so how does this all map to our views well if we start by bringing in our views and this view this is the view file from our article folder by the way so this folder, this file. So it's separated out from the main project. So let's go. So render to response. That was our, our very simple one liner function that helps us to render an HTML template from our templates folder. And I'll show you those shortly. We're now going to import our model that we created in, in, in our earlier um, tutorials. I think it was tutorial two where we created the articles model. We're just importing it, article.models import article, which is our model class. And then we create two small view functions. The first one is articles. The only argument to that is request, which is as normal that's what we saw last time but this time instead of just sticking a variable in there we use an article like we did in tutorial 2 and we're getting all of the objects out of there so we're using the object relational model to just pull out data without using any SQL and just using code and we're assigning it to a variable called articles which we're going to then pass through to our template file called articles.html. The next part is a little bit more complex, obviously, because it's now we're going to deal with passing variables into the into our view functions. In our URLs file, we defined it as article ID between the angle brackets, and we said that it's going to be a, an integer or variable length. 
So now in our view function, we have article. And there's the name of the variable, which matches what we've called it in our URL definition. And I'm giving it a default number of one. So just in case there is no article ID ever passed, it'll automatically pick number one. And that's fine. <clears throat> now, instead of just saying article objects all, like we did up here, I'm going to say get. And I'm going to say get where the ID equals the article ID that we've just passed in through the function. And then pass that through as a, ver a variable called article through to our template. <coughs> and then basically render that and return it. So that's very simple. So we've, we've set up our URLs. We've told our views what to expect in terms of arguments and what to do once we've got our arguments. Pull out the information from the database. What do we do on the template side? Now, this is going to be a very brief introduction to templates also because in a neck, I think it's probably going to be the next tutorial. I'm going to cover templates in more detail, but here's the basics just so you know how to actually drop in some information. In our article template, we have some HTML and we'll put some placeholders in as we did in the previous example using our article variable that we we passed through from the views just here using that line we're going to say put the article dot title so the member variable or the contents of the member variable title inside of this article object into there and also the body part into there so that's very simple for the article view. <coughs> now we did articles and then we did get all of the articles and pass them through as a list of articles to the articles template. So how does that work? What we're going to do is something similar to what you would do in Python. But we're going to use Python's, uh, the Django template language instead. So we've got our HTML that wraps around everything, obviously, but we have this new way of doing things. Because we obviously we've seen this before, where you, two, you put the two curly braces around either side and you put your variable name inside of there and it knows how to replace. But this is different. This means that this is some form of logic that the template language has to carry out. So we've got double curly brace for a placeholder or a you know insert information here kind of signal to the to the template language. And then we have a curly brace and a percent sign to say this is something that you have to perform in a logical sequence. So this is our standard Python way of making for loops except we don't put the semicolon on the end or the colon rather we just basically say four articles in article and close with a percent and curly brace and then later on down here we let the template language know that we finished our for loop here Obviously in Python you don't have that because you, you rely on indentation, but this isn't this is kind of like Python but not quite. So we do have to have the placeholder at the end to tell the template language when to finish this for loop. And we do that by saying end for with the correct markers to say that this is part of logic. <clears throat> so with this for loop we're creating an article. Then we're creating a header and creating a hypertext link to the URL articles get and then we insert the placeholder for our article ID. Then we're just going to wrap that around the title of the article in the list and underneath 
put the body. And that's as complicated as that's going to get for the time being. I'm not going to go any, into any more details about template and language. This is just enough for the example to give us an idea of how that all works. So to finally sum that up, we pushed all our URLs into the article uh, app package so that that would be kept separate from the rest of the site. We then made a small reference to it and then finally we created two views that can respond by getting all of the articles or one individually and passing it through to the relevant template where it will then be drawn or rendered rather into our web browser. So let's see what happens. I really hope this works because it worked last time I ran it, but you never know. Favorite software developers cry that it ran last time I ran it. Okay, so let's see if we can start with all. Yeah, that's worked awesomely. So this is our title bit. And we can see it's wrapped a, uh, a link around it with the ID. This one also, but with a different ID. This one also. I wasn't particularly clever or creative in sticking body text in there, but I'm pretty sure that's the right body text for those. So we should then be able to click these and it'll take us through to our other URL, which it does. And there you can see it's saying get ID number one, get ID number two. So that seems to have worked. So well done me. Right, so that completes this particular um, part of the tutorial series. Um, I hope this gives you a bit more insight into how to set up views and routes and how to, to go about packaging things um, so that you can then reuse your code in other sites and stop yourself right reinventing the wheel, so to speak. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more of these tutorials as they, as they get uploaded, then uh, click subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.